to prove that particles can indeed behave like waves, a very, ex a very famous experiment was conducted called the electron diffraction experiment. And this is exactly what it sounds like. It is showing that a particle like electrons can diffract, exhibit wave-like properties. And so what was done, okay, essentially I have a heated cathode over here, which is going to start to produce electrons. And so the first thing that I do is I accelerate the electrons across a certain potential difference V. Okay, and so as we have seen before, I can then calculate the, uh, the kinetic energy of the electrons. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, Ke is simply equal to the loss in EPE, which is the elementary charge times this potential difference V. Now remember that your kinetic energy can be expressed as the momentum squared over 2m. And so from here, I can calculate the momentum of the electrons as they pass through this uh, uh, accelerating potential. And so the electrons here would have a momentum that is equal to the square root of 2me times the potential difference it was accelerated across. Now, I then pass these electrons through something like graphite, right, or a crystal, some kind of macromolecular structure. And then what I observe on the screen over here, if I fill it up with a substance that can interact with electrons, I can see these uh, glow or light forming at certain positions, which strongly resembles that of a diffraction grating pattern. And so if you remember, there will be a large central maximum, okay, followed by a series of first order maximums, and then a bunch of second order maximums somewhere else. And so how does this happen? Well, remember, De Broglie says that if I've got some momentum, then my electrons then possess a wavelength, which is h over p. And so it is h over square root 2 MeV. And of course, since I have wavelength, I can diffract. And so, indeed, we can use the formula d sine theta equals to n lambda to go and see exactly where all these peaks form. Now, bear in mind, this is only possible with electrons. It's because if you go and calculate what this wavelength is, you'll find that this wavelength is possible to make it rather small, okay? Maybe in the order of 10 to the minus 10 meters, which is actually approximately the same as the spacing between carbon atoms in a graphite sample. And so remember, when the wavelength is approximately equal to your slit widths, which will be, in this case, the spacing between atoms, nice and observable diffraction can be seen, and therefore, the electron diffraction experiment works. Now, just to be clear, what you will actually see on the screen is a circular diffraction pattern that looks something like that, right? And that is because your graphite, remember, is not just a series of slits in one direction, right? Your atoms form a macromolecular structure, and so there are slits or a series of so-called slits in every single direction. And so you are forming diffraction patterns, again, in all directions. So there's one diffraction pattern forming like this. Okay, that's the central maximum. That's the first orders, the second orders. There's another one forming like this. Okay, first orders, second orders, so on and so forth. Right, another one like that, like that. And so when you put it all together, you get a series of circles, concentric circles, and so that is a circular diffraction pattern.